Welcome to Zeus Training. I'm Eric Ritz with Zona Technology. Uh, let's begin with uh, section one, the Zeus Overview. So Zeus is an efficient computational air elastic simulation tool for industrial application. Zeus provides a good balance between the complete modeling of the flow physics and computational efficiency. Uh, Zeus has an Euler solver with the boundary layer coupling which can capture all of the first order flow physics such as strong transonic shocks and the shock boundary layer interactions. And the mesh of the Euler solver requires much fewer grids than that of the full Navier-Stokes solver. Zeus includes an automated mesh generation which requires only the surface panel model as input as well as a few additional uh, cards to help with the mesh generation. So this means that aeroelastic engineers in the industry are used to performing aeroelastic analysis using the panel methods such as DLM or the doublet lattice method and Zero, which only need the setup of the surface panel model where no tedious grid generation is involved. So a CFD method with an automated mesh generation scheme that needs only the surface panel model as input can readily be adopted by the industry users for routine aeroelastic analysis. Additionally, Zeus has no moving mesh involved in the unsteady aerodynamic computation, which avoids the computational breakdown due to grid crossover at large amplitude oscillation. And the moving mesh issues can be avoided um, by using the transpiration boundary condition that approximates the exact Euler boundary condition by its first order Taylor expansion about the stationary mesh. And numerous numerical results have demonstrated the accuracy of the transpiration boundary condition for aeroelastic analysis. Uh, so let's look at some quick validation uh, cases here of the transpiration boundary condition. This is on the ISO GAI wing. Um, so on the upper left hand corner we have the angle of attack. On the right we have uh, the plunge. On the uh, bottom left we have uh, the angle of attack bottom right plunge for a the speed above the flutter speed. So on the top we've got right at the flutter speed. Um, so the red line is the exact boundary condition, the green dashed line is the simplified boundary condition which is the transpiration boundary condition. You, you can see that the angle of attack uh, time history um, they're right on top of each other. It's practically the same result. And then the same thing with the plunge. Now when we move to 33 percent above the flutter speed we would um, in the linear sense, we would expect uh, the results to just blow up to infinity, uh, but since we can include the nonlinear effects through the uh, CFD computation, we actually um, grow up to a bounded oscillation, which is limit cycle oscillation. But in the beginning time, when you can see the instability um, developing, you can see that the exact and the transpiration boundary conditions give um, the same result. The uh, frequency matches, the amplitude matches pretty well. Then once we develop the full LCO, which you can see is about 12 to 15 degrees, the exact boundary condition is giving us an amplitude of roughly plus or minus, uh, I'd say 13 degrees, whereas the transpiration boundary condition is oscillating around plus or minus about 15 degrees. So the transpiration boundary condition actually over predicts um, our the amplitude of the angle of attack, and uh, but the frequency um, is spot on. Um, so this is uh, very good um, for when you consider the the uh, the aircraft is pitching or the wing is pitching plus or minus 12 to 15 degrees, and we only miss the amplitude by that much. And remember, with Zeus in the transpiration boundary condition, the grid is not moving; um, it's a stationary grid, um, and we're just um, capturing the angle of attack through the transpiration boundary condition, which um, is we're modifying the boundary condition on the wing of the stationary mesh. And it's the same sto story when we look at the plunge. At the beginning, um, both our frequency and amplitude match very well. And then as the LCO gets much, much larger, the transpiration boundary condition is over predicting uh, the amplitude. So this validates that um, for flutter analysis, which is what Zeus is designed for, obviously we're concerned with the low amplitude region because all we care about is 
is the system stable or unstable? And we can clearly see that right at the flutter speed, we get exactly the same result as the exact, exact boundary condition. And 33% above the flutter speed, um, in the beginning time here, we have an exact match between the exact boundary condition and the transpiration boundary condition. Okay, so let's uh, dive a little bit deeper into exactly what is ZEUS. So ZEUS stands for Zona's Euler Unsteady Aeroelastic Solver, which provides solutions for complex configurations. It uses a Cartesian grid and employs boundary layer coupling. ZEUS uses a cell-centered finite volume method, and it uses Jameson's artificial dissipation scheme. Uh, we have a dual time-stepping algorithm for the unsteady solution, and then we have an automated mesh generation scheme that requires only the surface mesh for input and a few additional uh, cards that we'll see. Uh, Zeus uses the overset grid capability for complex configurations. So for example, with stores under a wing, um, uh, in order to have the automated mesh generation scheme, the store and the wing cannot be in the same global block of mesh, but we have the overset mesh where the stores um, are in one block of mesh, the wing is in another block of mesh, and then we use the overset scheme so we can retain the automated mesh generation. Zeus includes the z 3D spline module and the FEM modal solution importer, so that's all exactly the same um, as z uh, We have parallel computation using both OpenMP and MPI. OpenMP allows you to utilize multiple cores on the same machine, the same physical machine, and MPI allows you to distribute the work across multiple machines in a cluster. And then we can generate either the time domain aeroelastic responses or the frequency domain generalized aerodynamic forces for flutter, LCO, and static trim aeroelastic analysis. And many of the inputs are identical to that of Zero, and Zeus uses the Zero panel model for mesh generation. And a minimum learning, learning curve is needed for Zero users um, to perform the Zeus analysis to learn the uh, new additional cards that are acquired by Zeus. But you'll see um, the overall architecture um, is similar and the, the same concepts are used. So if you're familiar with Zero, um, you'll be very comfortable using Zeus. Let's review the automated mesh generation scheme. Uh, because Zeus solves the Euler equation with the transpiration boundary condition, all of the required geometric information existing in Zero is sufficient for the Zeus input. So if you take, if you have an existing Zero model, um, generally only minor, minor modifications are needed for um, Zeus. In fact, the, the biggest modifications will be increasing the mesh density of your existing Zero model um, for, uh, to have a suitable computation for Zeus. But you can, for the most part, take an existing Zero model and run it um, in Zeus. It's just, I, usually you'll want to increase the mesh density. Um, the Zeus mesh is generated by an automated mesh generation scheme. Uh, so the fuselage, wing, horizontal tail, uh, wingtip launcher, and pylons usually can be fitted into a single block of mesh. Uh, we, we have vertical tail there, but usually the vertical tail, you'll put it in a separate block of mesh. The tip missile with fins and the underwing stores uh, can be fitted into other blocks of mesh. And communication between the blocks of mesh is accomplished through an overset grid scheme. And each block of mesh is automatically generated by a Y-zone technique. And this is the Y-zone technique that we use for the automated mesh generation scheme. So first, all of the components within each block are projected onto an XY plane. On this XY plane, all of the components are divided into several spanwise zones called the Y-zones. So in this example, we have a fuselage, uh, we have a strake, um, and then we have a tail and wing, and then we've got a wingtip launcher. So when we project all of these components onto the XY plane, you can see we just get this flat surface. And importantly here, none of the components are overlapping with each other, uh, which is required. Um, so now what we do when we've projected the components onto the YZ plane 
um, you go um, and split this YZ plane into multiple Y zones where each component is in a different Y zone. So zone one here, we have just the launcher. With zone two, we've split the wing into two different zones. So our, our wing is just one C07 here, but because of the tail, um, we put a Y zone boundary at the boundary of the tail. So we have this portion of the left wing is in zone two. Now in zone three, we have the inboard wing and this portion of the tail, C07, and you can see also the tail, um, it's split among two different Y zones. Now in zone four, we have this portion of the wing, and then we have the inboard portion of the tail. Zone five, we, zone five, we have the strake, which runs from the leading edge of the wing all the way back to the trailing edge of the tail. And then zone six contains the fuselage, and then we mirror onto the right-hand side for zones seven through 11. A few notes here. Notice that we're numbering the zones from left to right. So in Zeus, uh, you always want to uh, go from left to right. Um, so one would be the left wing launcher, and then we move to the right. So the right wing launcher is zone 11. Uh, next, we'll look at the overset grid. So if we look at this uh, figure, um, this is the same aircraft as before, except now we've added um, some underwing stores. So you can imagine if we project this entire aircraft onto that same YZ plane, now the underwing stores and pylons will be overlapping with the wing. And remember, overlapping components are not allowed. So this means that we are required to make use of the overset grid. So the overset grid capability is capable of modeling complex configurations whose components cannot be fitted into a single block of mesh. And the overlapping component meshes are embodied in a global mesh. And then during the uh, solution, Zeus solves each block of mesh independently and interpolates the flow solution in the overlapping regions. And a converged solution um, at each time step is obtained by sub-iteration. So if we look at the front view of the aircraft, uh, the vertical tail, uh, we put that in a different block. And then the underwing stores and pylons, we put in um, different blocks. Uh, so for this missile out here, where it has four fins, you can see that we've put the missile body and pylon into one block of mesh. Uh, it's easier to see over here with, with, where it's blue, the dark blue. So this is one block of mesh which contains the missile body and pylon. And then each of the four fins, both the uh, fore and aft fins, uh, the fore and aft fins are in the same block, but we have four separate blocks here for the fins. And then um, all of these blocks are embedded in the main block. So the main block contains the fuselage, uh, the wing, and the tail, as we saw on the last uh, slide. So during each time step, Zeus will take the uh, uh, the flow solution in the main block and these sub-blocks and then interpolate back and forth between the two for uh, the uh, communication between the blocks. This is an overview of the Zeus software system file processing. So in the middle here, this is the Zeus software system. This is the Zeus executable um, code. Um, so before you run Zeus, you will generate an input file. This is a uh, text file. Um, so this, in this case, we've called it myjob.imp. By convention, um, our Zona software, the input files, uh, we name them .inp, but they're just uh, text files. So you can edit them uh, with any uh, text editor. Um, additionally, um, the input to Zeus is the output file of the free vibration solution of the structural finite element analysis. Um, generally, we use MSC Nashtran, but we also support Astros, Ideas, uh, and Free Format. Um, so these are the main two inputs to Zeus. Uh, meanwhile, um, you don't have to worry about this every time you run Zeus. This is a one-time setup. But when Zeus is installed, um, you'll define a, a file called dirname.fix. This contains the path where the runtime database um, is stored, and then the license.dat uh, contains the appropriate license license information for compu uh, communicating with ZLS, the uh, Zona license server. Uh, so these are set up once, 
uh, when Zeus is installed. So now when you run Zeus, um, it reads all of this information. It will create the runtime database, which is a scratch directory. Um, so files um, are written here and then read, read from here during Zeus execution. Um, and then Zeus will create the output file. Um, so it takes the same name as the input file, but instead of .inp, it's called .out. And once again, this is just a simple text file, which you can view with your favorite text editor. Also, a log file is created, so you can see uh, approximately how much time is taken in each um, module of Zeus. Once again, we have the same base name of the input file name, but we append .log for the log file. And then in the Zeus input file, you can request for additional output files to be generated. So we have plot files such as the aerodynamic model, unsteady pressure, flutter mode shapes, uh, interpolated mode shapes, um, and, and additional uh, data files, which we'll see. Uh, speaking of the Zona license server, we'll review that real quick. Um, once again, you don't need to worry about this every time you run Zeus. Basically, you just need to ensure this is set up when you install Zeus. And then about once a year, um, you'll update your uh, license. So the, you'll only have to worry about this about once a year, or actually your, your IT department should handle that. But um, the Zona license server ZLS supports floating and node locked licensing. Um, and essentially, they're the same thing. Um, it's a Java-based application on both the server and the client side. So Java is required. And by server, we mean the Zona uh, license server. So in this example, we have the Zona license server running on one machine. And then we have several engineers running Zeus or Zero or whatever on their um, own computers. So these would be the ZLS clients. So the client needs Java and the server needs Java. Uh, this requires uh, Java version 1.6 or higher. And it communicates over port uh, 3,333. So you need to make sure your firewall allows traffic over port 3333 um, to do that communication. And then additionally, the server requires the SafeNet dongle um, attached to it. So you don't need this dongle on every client machine, which is running Zeus. You just need it on the machine, which is running the ZLS uh, server. So in the floating in, um, case, we have one a Zona license server running, which supports multiple licenses uh, to be checked out. In the node locked case, this is the, the same thing. Everything is the same, except uh, the Zona license server is running on the same machine that is running Zeus. Um, and there's really no extra configuration. It's just when you uh, install Zeus and it asks you, where is your Zona license server located? You'll just say, oh, it's located on the same machine. Um, but it still will communicate over port 3333. Um, and finally, the ZLS client-side software is installed on the user machines, uh, which are connected to the uh, network. So Zeus will communicate with the ZLS client, and then the uh, ZLS client will communicate with the ZLS uh, server. Um, and, and then it's important to avoid uh, lock tokens on the client. So the Z Zona CAE software script, which would be Zeus.exe, um, checks out a license when the job is launched and then checks the token back in when the job terminates. So when you run Zeus um, at the command line, you'll type Zeus.exe and then your uh, input file name and uh, Zeus will run. So the Zeus.exe program is what we call the driver script program. It's responsible for checking out uh, the token and then it um, calls the, um, the actual computational program, which is called Zeusbin.exe on Windows and just Zeusbin on Linux. So over here in our task manager, for this is for Windows, you can see we have zero.exe which is a child process of the command prompt. And then uh, zeusbin.exe is a child process of, or this is actually Zero, but it's the same thing for Zeus. zeusbin.exe is a child process of zeus.exe. So the zeusbin 
um, is actually what does all the work. The Zeus.exe just handles the license uh, communication. Now, in an abnormal, abnormal termination, for example, power failure, uh, the token will not be checked back into ZLS because the Zeus.exe is just terminated and the Zona license server has no way of knowing that the job has finished. It, it thinks it's still running. So this leads to a locked token situation. So to avoid the locked tokens, we have two ways that you can terminate the running job. One is you can kill the Zeus bin Dot exe. So if you're on Windows in the Task Manager, you'll just uh, right-click on the zeusbin.exe and click in task. When you do this, the uh, computation is terminated immediately, but then the zeus.exe will recognize that Zeus bin has died, and then it will check the token back in to the server, and so everything will, will work out fine. Same thing on Linux, you want to kill Zeus bin. You don't want to kill Zeus. Um, the second option, uh, we'll see that on the next slide. Uh, so the important thing here, make sure you select Zeus bin and not uh, Zeus. Uh, the second option here is use control C in the command prompt. So this is both for Windows and Linux. When you have your command prompt open running the job, uh, if you just focus, put your focus on the command uh, prompt and type control C, that will kill the program. And so in this case, the uh, Zeus.exe will catch the control C and pass it down to the Zeus bin.exe. So Zeus bin will die, and then Zeus will recognize that the Zeus bin has died and it will check the token back in and then terminate gracefully. And method three here, um, this is the uh, this is the big hammer method, is just restart ZLS. So if a token is not checked back into ZLS, uh, for example, in a power failure, um, you've got two options to clean up the locked tokens. Um, and then once again, we note here, if you just use the X button to close the command prompt window, that will just kill the Zeus.exe right away, and so you'll end up with a locked token, and this will terminate the job. So don't ever close your command prompt. Uh, just minimize it. Okay, so the first nicer option is within the uh, Zeus software installation, there's a folder called ZLS uh, slash log. Now within this folder, there is a cleanup utility, which is called cleanup.exe on Windows, and it's just called cleanup on Linux, that can run, you can run this program to um, clear out the locked tokens. Um, this doesn't always work if the token file was not properly written, but it, uh, but it usually works. So this is the nicer option because you can leave ZLS running. You just run the cleanup utility, and that will check back in the, the locked tokens. Um, if that doesn't work, we have the big hammer option, which is restart ZLS. So if you do this, um, it will um, obviously... Uh, remove all of the tokens from the currently running jobs. So all of your, if you have other jobs that are currently running within your organization, um, those jobs will all die eventually. They won't die immediately, but they'll die soon and you'll have lots of people mad at you. So if you do this restart ZLS option, you want to make sure that there are no other jobs uh, running when you restart uh, the server. Um, and then finally, uh, this is, you don't really need to worry about this unless you're a clean freak, but uh, sometimes the leftover tokens that are not checked back into ZLS after restarting ZLS can be deleted manually as they're no longer needed. And these files are located in the ZLS slash log folder inside your Zeus installation. Um, and the file names here, for example, are log-001- and then we have a date and a time. Um, you don't want to delete any files that are associated with a currently running job. Um, so the easiest way to check that is look at the date. Um, so if all of your currently running jobs have all been submitted within the last few days, you don't want to delete any files that represent something within the last few days. Um, and now we'll look at a more detailed uh, 
program architecture of Zeus before we just saw the input and output files. Now we'll look at within Zeus itself. Um, so first to note, the spline input and the modal data importer are identical to Z arrow. Um, so we have in the input file defined the surface panel model input. So we have C arrow 7 and body 7 cards. And in addition, we have the gap, gap 1 and gap Z cards. The gap cards are for helping the mesh generation. So these input cards feed into the automated mesh generation module. This is where the flow field mesh grows from the surface panel model, and we have the overset mesh for the complex configuration. Uh, then we'll jump down to our structure input. So we have the modal data importer. So we can import MSC, Nashtran, NX, Nashtran, Ansys, Abacus, Alfini, um, also Astros, and we have the free format input. Um, so that importer is identical to Z arrow. And then meanwhile, we have the spline input, which maps our aerodynamic surface panel model to the structure model. So we have the infinite plate spline, the thin plate spline, the beam spline, and rigid body attachment. So the spline and modal data importer feed into the spline module. So within the spline module, we generate the spline matrix, and then we have the spline modes from the structure grid to the aerodynamic grid. Um, now, with our aerodynamic model, our structure model, and spline, um, we also have our air elastic analysis input. So within Zeus, we can do flutter analysis, maneuver loads analysis, trim analysis, gust loads, ejection loads, and the nonlinear flutter analysis. All of these inputs feed into the Euler solver module. Now we have some different um, solver options here. We have a time domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. We have a frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic computation by the full Euler solver. We have the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic computation by the linearized Euler solver. Um, and these are all the uh, time domain uh, solvers here. Then we have a pseudo time domain aerodynamic computation for trim. We have the steady aerodynamic computation on the rigid aircraft, and we have a discrete gust aerodynamic computation. Um, so all these won't run at the same time, but depending on your um, particular analysis and uh, solver options, you'll choose which one of these um, solver options to use. Um, and then lastly, our output of Zeus, we have the graphical output um, or just the, the ASCII text file output. So we can have a transient response animation um, in case of a time domain solution. We have flutter mode animation in case of the flutter analysis. Uh, we have the VG plots also from flutter analysis. Uh, we can plot the deformed aerodynamic model by the trim analysis. And we can also export loads in terms of Nashtran force and moment cards for a detailed uh, static stress analysis in Nashtran. So let's review the options of the Euler solver module. Um, so first, we have the time domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. This is a time accurate Euler solver coupled with the state space equations of the structure. And it's a tightly coupled air elastic simulation for the transient response. Uh, next, we have the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic forces by the full Euler solver. This generates the frequency domain generalized aerodynamic forces or GAFs by applying the Fourier transform to the time domain aerodynamic forces due to sinusoidal excitation. And then a flutter analysis is performed using either the G method or the K method. Next, we have the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic forces by the linearized Euler solver. Um, so in this case, the Euler equation is linearized with respect to a small structural oscillating amplitude, and we compute the gaffes directly in the frequency domain using the pseudo time domain computation. So for a flutter analysis, you'll use either this uh, second or third option. And then for the maneuver loads analysis, you'll use uh, the first option. Um, next, we have the pseudo time domain aerodynamic computation. Um, so in this case, all time dependent terms in the Euler equation and the boundary condition are inactive. And this is coupled with the structural equation for a static 
air elastic analysis. So this can give you the static air elastically deformed um, aircraft. And then next we have the steady aerodynamic computation on the rigid aircraft. So in this case, the steady aerodynamic forces by the pseudo time domain computation. Um, but now we do not couple with the structure because we want to do, do, the, do, the, do the analysis on the rigid aircraft. And this generates the steady aerodynamics prior to the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamics computation. Um, so when you do your flutter analysis, um, you want to compute the gaffs first Zeus will compute the steady forces. So it will use either the pseudo time domain aerodynamic computation to get the static air elastic solution, or it will perform the steady aerodynamic computation on the rigid aircraft. And then lastly, we have the discrete gust aerodynamic computation. So here, the aerodynamic forces due to discrete gust um, are calculated by introducing a time domain traveling gust profile in the boundary condition. And this um, is coupled with the state space structural equation to compute the transient response due to discrete gust. Uh, so next, let's look at the different aeroelastic analysis modules that we have in Zeus. We have the flutter analysis module. Um, so this module computes the gaffs by invoking the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. And then once we have the GAFs, uh, we can do the flutter analysis by either the G method or the K method. Um, so after the GAFs are computed, um, then of course the flutter analysis is performed exactly the same as uh, Z arrow by using the G method or K method. Next we have the trim module, which invokes the pseudo time domain aerodynamic computation. And this we do the modal approach for solving the trim system. And we have both determined and overdetermined uh, trim systems. Uh, next, for our time domain uh, computation, we have several modules. The maneuver loads module is a transient maneuver loads analysis due to a pilot input command. And this is a tightly coupled air elastic analysis by invoking the time domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. Uh, next is the ejection loads module, similar to the maneuver loads except now we have transient ejection loads analysis due to store ejection. And you can also couple this with a pilot input command. Um, additionally, uh, you can have a varying mass matrix due to the loss of store mass. And once again, this is a tightly coupled air elastic analysis by invoking the time domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. Next is the gust loads module where we have a transient response analysis due to a discrete Gust. And once again, you can couple the excitation due to discrete gust with a pilot input command. Um, so this invokes the discrete gust aerodynamic computation. Uh, then we have the nonlinear flutter module, which is a nonlinear flutter analysis with structural nonlinearities. And this is uh, once again tightly coupled air elastic analysis by invoking the time domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. Um, so one example of the nonlinear flutter module is if you have a control surface with free play. That would be a structural nonlinearity. Um, and then next we have the GenGAF module. Um, so this module will generate the GAFs due to the structural modes, control surface deflections, and or the sinusoidal gust. Um, so this invokes the frequency domain unsteady aerodynamic computation. And the GAFs can be computed about the undeformed rigid aircraft or a statically air elastically deformed aircraft. And then you can take the GAFs uh, computed by the GenGAF module and feed them into the flutter analysis module. By default, the flutter analysis module will compute the GAFs about the, the, or the steady aerodynamics are computed about the rigid aircraft. In order to compute your GAFs about a statically deformed aircraft, you must use the GenGAF module. Uh, next, we need to review the definition of set for the structural and aerodynamic models. Um, so in the structure finite element model, we have the G set, which is six times the number of grid points. Um, so each grid point has six degrees of freedom, represented as T1, T2, T3, and R1, R2, R3 which of course are the displacements and rotations about the x, y, and z directions defined in the local output coordinate system. Um, so in Zeus, the G set, remember these, um, 
the x, y, and z directions are defined in the local output coordinate system. In Nashtran, you have uh, the basic coordinate system, and then when you define a grid, you can define that in a local coordinate system. But then the eigenvector solution, furthermore, can be defined as output in a local output coordinate system. And so the G set is that local output coordinate system. Next, we have the A set, which is the analysis set. This is the number of degrees of freedom by excluding single point constraints, multi point constraints, and O set degrees of freedom from the G set. Um, in my experience, um, the models I use, we always just use the G set. However, I know that some people do prefer to use um, the A set. Uh, so Zeus um, does support this. And you'll use either the G set or the A set. And then next we have H set, which is the number of structural modes. So if you have a structure model uh, with a thousand grids and you do uh, 50 modes analysis, then of course the H set would be 50 modes and your G set would be 1,000 times 6, 6,000 uh, would be the G set. Next, we have the aerodynamic model. First is the J set, which is the number of aerodynamic boxes or aerodynamic panels. Next is the K set, and K set is just 6 times the J set. Um, so we have three displacement uh, degrees of freedom. So each aerodynamic box has three displacements, hx, hy, and hz, which are displacement along x, y, and z. And then we have three uh, slopes, uh, partial x with respect to x, partial y with respect to x, and partial z with respect to x. So these aren't uh, moments, these are uh, slopes. And then for the aerodynamic force, um, each aerodynamic box has three forces, fx, fy, and fz, and then three zero moments. So each individual aerodynamic box does not generate a moment force. It just generates a normal force on the box. And then lastly, we have the C set, which is the number of aerodynamic control surfaces. So if you have two ailerons um, on a, a full span model and then uh, a rudder, you know, that would be three uh, control surfaces, for example. Um, next, how to uh, run Zeus. Um, the easiest uh, way to do that is open up a command prompt and then uh, change directory to where the input file is. Um, usually, um, the structure finite element method output file uh, would be in that same directory or it could be in a, a parent directory or you know some other directory that's fine uh, but the key point is go to the directory where the input file is and then at the command prompt you'll type Zeus and then the input file name so from our previous example we had myjob.imp so Zeus space myjob.imp the example here um, optionally additionally you can explicitly specify the output file name so in this case, we've specified the output file name as myjob.out, um, but you don't have to specify it. If you just have myjobzeus, myjob.imp, and then leave the output file name blank, Zeus will name the output file as myjob.out. Um, and so I never use this full input file name, output file name option. I always just only specify uh, the input file name. The output files will be placed in the same directory where the job was submitted and following uh, the completion of the Zeus job the computer will beep. Um, so we have several options available. Um, the options can be printed out by typing Zeus um, space dash help and that will list out all the options. One of the options we have is notify equals no. Uh, notify equals yes would be the default, but notify no prevents Zeus from, from creating the beep sound. So if you find the beep annoying, you can type Zeus notify equals no, and then myjob.imp. And that concludes our uh, introduction.